Hey there, Jess from Make and Do Crew here, and we are going to learn how to extend the sleeves of a hexagon sweater. In this tutorial, we're making my campfire cardigan pattern. So we're using the granny stitch, but you can use the basic concepts to create a sleeve on any sort of hexagon cardigan. The campfire cardigan pattern includes two sleeve options. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to do the decreases so that you create a tapered sleeve like this. But just know that if you prefer a wider sleeve, you can use these same concepts and just avoid the decreasing and you'll end up with a sleeve where it is as big at the wrist as at the current opening of your hexagon. For each sleeve we want to attach our yarn in the hexagon corner at the elbow here so this is the top of the sleeve and we want to attach it in the corner that is on the same side as our dominant hand. For right-handed crocheters, we wanna attach our yarn here because we're gonna work our first double crochet into the seam. So we're gonna to wanna to work in that direction. Lefties are going to attach right there and place the first double crochet again in the seam. So you're gonna to wanna to be able to work in this direction. And then the same is true on your second sleeve. As a right-handed crocheter, you put your yarn right here and work this direction. And then lefties, you're going to attach your yarn here because you're gonna to wanna to be able to work in this direction. What that first round is going to look like then is that we have our yarn attached here and we're working our first cluster over those hexagon corners. And so I have my yarn attached and I am going to chain three now. And then I wanna put my first double crochet in the middle of that seam. It can sometimes be hard to insert your hook if you've really woven in your ends there. So just try to find a space that you can work into and place one double crochet there. Now I technically have two stitches because my chain three counts as one stitch, that's my second one, and I'm going to work my third double crochet of this cluster in the next hexagon corner. All right, there's my first cluster. So I'm going to chain one and then work a three double crochet cluster in each of my chain one spaces around the rest of the sleeve. We're not doing any decreasing on this round. We're just getting things set up. When we arrive at the end, we're going to finish with a chain one as we always do. And then we want to slip stitch to the top of that turning chain. So that's how we would end the round. I wanna show you a way to change colors here though, because I do it slightly differently when working in the round like this. What I like to do is complete all the stitches of that round and just work my final slip stitch using my new color. So I have my second color here. I've inserted my hook under that turning chain and I'm going to pull my new color through to perform this slip stitch. And as a lot of these color changing tricks go, Holding all the yarn tails is really the hardest part as you get started in your new color. But now I've officially transitioned to my next color. I'm holding the two yarn tails tight and I can begin round two by chaining three and we're working in the opposite direction now. So these are turned rounds just as we've turned everything throughout the sweater. And I want to work a cluster into my first space. So I have this chain three that counts as my first double crochet. And so I'm going to put two more double crochets in this space to create my first cluster. And again, this is where I tend to tighten everything down and I'll weave those in later. I'm going to continue in that same stitch repeat from the last round where we work three double crochets to make one cluster and then do a chain space in between around the entire sleeve. At the end of the round, again, I'm going to chain one to complete this repeat of cluster, then chain one, and then slip stitch to the top of the turning chain. And because I just love weaving in ends, I'm going to change colors again slip stitch through with my new color, hold onto those yarn tails, and then chain three to begin round three. And all of the sizes here are starting with a few rounds where we don't decrease. And then depending on the size that you're making, the frequency and number of decreases that you do will play out down the length of the sleeve. So I'm going to work one more round here where I don't decrease. And just like the previous round, all right, I have finished the end of round three here, slip stitch to the top of the turning chain with my new color. So if you would prefer a more open bell-shaped sleeve, you can continue making rounds just like this without decreasing until you have the length of sleeve that you want. But if you prefer a tapered look, I'm gonna show you how to work a decrease now. And we are going to alternate our decreases, placing them 
around the bottom of the sleeve, like more in your underarm, and then on some rounds, place them more at the top. And the exact placement doesn't really matter. That's why we don't provide stitch counts for exactly where to put it. It's more important that you just eyeball and say, okay, I've got one down here. The next time I decrease, I'm gonna do it up here. And that's to avoid any section of the sleeve getting particularly bunched up. To begin my decrease round, I've already chained three. I do need to turn this because I need to work back in the opposite direction of my last round. We want to work about halfway through this round. So we're going to start it just like we have the rest of them. And we're going to continue with these double crochet clusters and chain one spaces until we get to the halfway point in the sleeve. I have my sleeve folded in half so I can show you. I'm stopping just short of halfway because I'm going to put my first decrease over the next two chain one spaces. By definition, decreasing is turning more stitches into fewer stitches. In this case, we're going to eliminate one chain one space, which is gonna make the sleeve just a little bit tighter. So I am going to double crochet in the first chain one space. And then instead of putting my next double crochet in that space, I wanna work into the middle double crochet of this cluster. Essentially what we're doing is we're making one cluster in this round, but we're spreading it out over two chain one spaces. So I have the first double crochet of my cluster, the second double crochet of my cluster, and the third one is going to go in the next chain one space. All right, that's our double crochet cluster decrease. We've got one, two, three, and they are taking the space of two clusters. Now we can continue in the same pattern we have with a double crochet cluster and a chain one space until we get to the end of the round. So I'm going to work a couple non-decrease rounds now and I will meet you back here to talk about where to place your second decrease. So I've got my even rounds done, my yarn is attached, and I'm gonna work my first cluster here. I've got that chain three, it's my first double crochet, two more double crochets, and we're just gonna go ahead and work our first decrease right away to place it toward the top of the sleeve. So I've chained one, and then just like before, when we decrease, we're going to double crochet in the first chain one space, then double crochet in the middle, double crochet of the next cluster, and then double crochet in the next chain one space. Again, instead of working two separate clusters, I've placed one cluster spread out over two spaces, decreasing the number of clusters in this round by one. So now I'm going to continue to work in that pattern of a double crochet cluster and a chain one space the rest of the way around. As you can see here, my sleeve is already starting to taper a bit. This is my last hexagon round. You can see my sleeve rounds, they're decreasing periodically by one cluster, thereby making my sleeve more and more narrow. And at this point, you have all the skills that you need to continue decreasing until you're happy both with the tightness of the wrist and the length of the sleeve. It can be helpful to add ribbing at the end of the wrist if you like an even more snug fitting sleeve. And I have a tutorial you can follow along for that as well. If you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate if you considered subscribing and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and happy crocheting.